finished in, in the class was uh, The Home Place by Wright Morris, which, this is not a photograph from The Home Place, but it's a novel with photographs, and it's something that he called, uh, it was an experiment that he called photo text. And so, on one side of the, um, of the book, one, one page, is a photo, and on the other side is a novel, and the story is being told about uh, a home place in Nebraska. The book was published or written in 1947, and the photographs were taken in 1947. But the photographs are not illustrative. Um, they're not meant to enhance the text in the way that an illustration typically enhances the text of a novel or of a, of a children's book, but rather um, a kind of what they call ekphrasis, um, in which one medium of art is commenting or responding to another medium of art. And so he took the pictures of his family's, uh, his uncle's farm, and then um, the, book, the novel about characters much like himself and his family um, on the farm. And uh, the pictures don't necessarily directly reference what's going on in the book, most of the time they don't. And um, it turned out to be an experiment that, well, we could argue whether it failed um, creatively, but it certainly failed um, in the marketplace. So they came out with the home place, and then it was his publisher was Scribner's at the time. And then they came out with another one. And by the time he was ready to publish his third book in this genre that he felt like he was creating, um, his publisher said, mm, now let's publish it without the pictures. And so the third book, The World in the Attic, um, was published without photographs. And then Scribner's dropped Wright Morris altogether. Um, but he went on to publish, fortunately anyway, several books and to win great awards and great success as a novelist, um, but didn't really return to publishing his photographs until much later. And this is from a project called God's Country and My People, um, which included text and photographs. And I love it just because it's a, it's a picture of books. So you're opening a book to a picture of books. Um, and of course, and later in Wright Morris's career, he also um, had a successful uh, resurgence um, in terms of, of his photographs, but mostly through the gallery market. Um, his, his photographs were then viewed as art and were reproduced in a much more um, effective manner for him. So, Stan Stravicki is a photograph photographer who um, spent a lot of time in New Orleans for um, years and years, taking photographs of the Mardi Gras and, and the French Quarter. And then in 2005, uh, with Hurricane Katrina, he returned to photograph the city that he had loved and had documented for, for years um, in crisis, essentially. Um, and so these, these photographs are a result of that, we call the lost library. Um, these are actual books from, from the library that were strewn about. He didn't set these up. These are actually the, the, the books as they appeared before him when he took his, his camera to the area. See it okay, or should I dim the lights? No, it's fine. Okay, thank you. I did the So, these are examples of the book as subjects. Um, of course, we can go back to Mary Cassatt, who frequently, or from time to time, uh, captured uh, women reading books, uh, children reading books. She was famous for capturing the private moments of women and children and women with children. Um, and this would have been at a time in the mid-1800s when women reading made men nervous. Um, uh, or any kind of private indulgence for women made uh, 
men nervous, so much so that previously women were completely, in some cultures and communities, forbidden from reading at all. Um, of course, that continues with some cultures, but um, women were forbidden access to libraries. They were, um, I think, on uh, the most simplistic level, uh, men wanted women doing something else with their time, namely serving them. Um, but also, there's also just the, the threat that a woman reading can uh, pose for, for a culture of, dominated by male leadership, um, women learning, women um, indulging in, um, in the imagination and in, in a kind of escape the book suggests. Of course, she looks quite relaxed and, and at ease, but you know that that book is taking her to all sorts of of worlds that she may not otherwise experience. Um, there was a quote I wanted to read. Um, this is from the, uh, the scholar James Conlon, who's, who wrote a, 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 an article about men representing women in art. Um, in, in writing, the author pits his or herself into the text of a book. The reader then spends much intimate time alone with this expressed self. A good book holds the reader, touches her, even as she takes tactile pleasure in its weight and the texture of its pages. Which speaks to what I was talking about, that it's more than just uh, a flight of the imagination in a private moment. It's also about that, that, um, that experience, the, the tactile experience of holding a book in your hands, and all that it suggests and all the history the book holds in terms of uh, the development of the format. Edward Hopper, of course, did several paintings of women reading. This is a particularly haunting one, I think. Um, this woman alone in a hotel room. Um, if you're familiar with the book Fun Home, the graphic uh, memoir, the uh, comic book uh, memoir by Alison Bechtel, here we see her having one of many interactions that she has in this book with her father, who's well-read, educated, um, and, and prickly. I mean, they have a difficult relationship all from her childhood on, um, but they've always been able to relate to each other based on their interest in books. As a matter of fact, it even leads her to take a class in James Joyce in college so that she can essentially have something to talk about with her father. That's part of the reason. Um, and her father ultimately, in exchange, uses that as an opportunity to further dominate her by um, um, giving her the book that he used in college and uh, essentially trying to lead her exactly what she should read. Um, certainly a meaningful moment for father and daughter, but also um, in some sense contributing to some of the problems that they've had in their relationship. And you see in Fun Home, Alison Beckel's book, um, many representations of women reading books. Um, Andre Cortez, the great photographer, um, one of the photographers who promoted a kind of what they called a visual literacy, um, published a whole book called On Reading, and there's an exhibit that tours the country called On Reading. Um, when she captures all these various moments. And here you have a college student at Long Island University in the 1960s. Another cortege photo, which I love because you have to kind of find the reader on that rooftop with their book. Gentleman with the magnifying glass at the, the book bin on that side of the bookstore. 